probably one of the richest things I've ever tasted in my life. <laughs> At 8 in the morning, this is definitely a unique experience. So we've just arrived at the Abu Dhabi airport and we're about to start our very long journey to the other side of the world to Tokyo! They said travel light to Tokyo so obviously I listened. So finally sitting down in the first class lounge. Got a nice cavity on the go. So we just sat down in our seats um, and ready for the 10 plus hour journey ahead of us. The um, current boarding is completed. Oh, thank you. And I just received best news. Boarding is completed, which means we've gone this seat free. Yeah. Like, uh, I am basically in business class now. Um, I don't need business class. I've got the middle seat free so I can sleep on Elliot and in this middle seat the whole flight. <laughs> He's set up. He doesn't even need anything. He's so set up. So we've landed in Tokyo. Oh my god, excuse my hair. I can't believe how messy it is. And we're in the train station taking a train to our hotel in Shibuya. This is what we've realized um, off the cuff that what is one of the, more, the cheaper options um, to get to Shibuya. The taxis were pretty crazy. So we're taking the JR Express to Shibuya, so that should take us about an hour and a bit. But yeah, super excited. I had heard so many good things about Japanese supermarkets, so I headed into the family mart in the airport station to get some goodies for the train. I was in awe, honestly, there were so many new and unique things to choose from. First experience in the family mart in the train station. I, I bought this thing. I took a bite of it. I don't know what it is. You have to try it. Oh, it's a mo. It's a kombuki. I have no idea. Is it nice? Uh, it, yeah, weird. So we bought the famous. I don't know what you even call these. Wait, am I supposed like to eat sushi sandwiches? Wait, are, are you supposed to do something with the seaweed here? I have no idea. Yeah, you're supposed to eat it. Oh, wait, how? The seaweed is separate. It's so weird because all of the stuff here is like. No, apparently it's the, the, like the egg sandwiches are really good. Um, but yeah, it's so weird because like everything inside the shops are like all the snacks are so different to the ones that you see in anywhere else in the world. Like I ha can't recognize any single one of the snacks. We headed to the Narita Express platform and it was actually really close and surprisingly easy to find everything. This is so much more difficult than I thought. Oh shit. Okay, I'm just gonna... Just, just, just eat it. Like... How is it? It's okay. Hmm. That is a really, really good egg and ham sandwich. It took about an hour to get to Shibuya Station from the airport, and though our hotel was only a 10 minute walk from the station, we decided it's worth getting a taxi so we don't have to contend with dragging them around. We just checked into our hotel, got ready. Um, this is my outfit. Mixture of Zara and um, naked fashion um, from Sweden. I've never seen this. It's just so interesting. That yeah, they do. Like it. Even in Abu Dhabi. Really? And then you know exactly what you want to be eating. That's smart. As we walked around Shibuya and explored our neighborhood, I was surprised that it wasn't heaving with people. I thought it was going to be super busy being Sakura season, but besides the obvious tourist hotspots like Shibuya Scramble, it was actually pretty chill. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. There's a live singing bus. That I'm dying. A live singing bus. Whoa, this is busy. So, so this this is this is Shibuya scramble. No no wait, 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 wait. The famous Shibuya scramble. And I can actually see why they call it that now. Crazy. Great. If you don't already know, the Shibuya crossing is the busiest pedestrian crossing in the world. This is probably one of the most famous tourist hotspots, but I don't care, you must witness the scramble yourself. 
As for the main Shibuya shopping district, it's certainly got a lot going on and worth paying a visit, but I found just walking 10 minutes away from there on the back streets was immediately a more authentic experience. I was really happy though when I passed a gaming arcade, as I know these are super popular in Japan. Those like chicken nugget earrings and edamame and chips. Oh my god, they're so cute! Visiting the arcade is something that people tend to do on a Saturday night. It's so weird because I feel arcades have kind of died out in other parts of the world, but not here. And to be honest with you, I am so here for it. I want to win. I want to win the pig. So that's my goal. Let's see if I manage. I got way too addicted to this and I see why it's so popular. I did it about three times before Elliot gave up, but just when he walked away, chances have it, I ended up winning. Jamie? I'm so happy! Jamie, Jamie, Jamie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure, sure, winning? I'm so happy. So we're waiting to go to this place, which I still don't understand what it's called. Thank you. You know, this is good. Because table said it was. Wait, wait. Okay. Cheers. Cheers to our first night in Tokyo. <laughs> Drinking on the street. Mm. Oh my god. Oh wow. Oh my god, that's amazing. Nice. Let me try that. So one thing that you have to get used to if you're going to be dining at the really good restaurants in Tokyo is lining. So we've been here probably around 35, 40 minutes um, and probably got like another 20 minutes to go. Um, but I'm hoping this is worth it because people in line have said it's so good, super good. Um, I still don't know the name of it because it's in Japanese. But when I find out what it is in English, then I'll um, put it down here. I want a 21. It's <laughs> 21. Where's 21? Just show the guy who's Okay, no, 21. There. Okay. And then extra toppings. I'm going to go for an extra boiled egg. Because I like boiled eggs. And bamboo shrimps. Try get chili pepper and fried garlic on top. Oh, oh, this is topping only. Oh, me, me. Oh, this is me. That's the main. Okay. Oh, oh, I see, I see. As you can see, at a lot of restaurants in Tokyo, you have to order from a ticket vending machine. This can get a little bit complicated if the menu isn't in English. I did eventually figure it out with the help of the staff. And worst case, you can always just download the Google Translate app to help you. What do I do? Huh? The 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 so I'm sure you noticed Elliot, Elliot couldn't go inside because he's not eating this and they don't actually have seating for it. For him. Why I'm eating this and oh my god, it is absolutely delicious. I'm struggling a bit with my chopsticks, so I'm not an expert. Mm. Best noodles I've ever had. So because Elliot didn't eat the soba, we went to a conveyor belt sushi place just a few doors down. Though we didn't plan on eating here, Elliot was very happy with the sushi. Oh yeah. It's for you, yeah. Oh, some eggs. Oh, oh my god, that is so random. I can't think of anything worse. Like, I think I would all the guy. Okay. It's like seaweed powder. So we've made a quick stop at our local McDonald's. Oh my god, look at the Sakura menu. There's specifically a Sakura menu this time of year. So cool. And I just had to do like quality control on the nuggets because I have to do that everywhere I go. It's a little snack before I, a little bedtime snack before I go to sleep. Mm. Very good. Wow. wow. Hmm. Thanks. Wow. 
Wow. That's really good. It's very rich. Like, you might be sick after it, but it's delicious. Hi, guys. Morning from Tokyo. Um, Sujiki Fish Market. I still haven't really got my hand on um, that spelling yet. Um, but anyways, we're here at the fish, famous fish market and I, I am so shocked. It's 6.30 in the morning and there's like massive lines already. Pretty, pretty crazy. I'll show you guys in a second. I highly recommend getting to the fish market at 6.30 in the morning like us. This might sound a bit crazy, but there were already lines at this time for some of the most popular spots. So they weren't that long and they were moving fast. For once, I was actually thanking my jet lag for getting me up early. I have no idea what any of this stuff no, is. No, I don't know what any of this is. Like, what do you do with this bag of... Is it fish? Is it meat? So we're in this line for Unitora Nakatori. I'm trying to get the pronunciation of that right. Um, but thank goodness we came now about 20 minutes before opening because look at the line already. Welcome to Japan, the place of lining. After about 20 minutes of lining, we got into Unitora Nakadori. We were recommended to go by a local friend and wow, let me tell you, it did not disappoint. Admittedly, it was on the pricey side, but it was so worth it. I personally recommend sharing it with someone as we did, and that way you can also enjoy more food at the market. Mm. Mm. I didn't realize I liked to make miso soup until now. So good. We explored the market. It's actually just such an interesting experience. Seeing bizarre foods like grilled stingray fin, watching chefs in action, and of course trying the delicious food. I tried the mochi, which was really good, and also the wagyu beef with uni on top, which is something that I had been wishing for for a long time. I've been wanting to try this since I knew I was coming to Japan, so I'm so, so excited. Look at that uni with wagyu. <laughs> what do you think that is? <laughs> okay, so I've got some wagyu steak over here topped with uni. It's absolutely delicious, but probably one of the richest things I've ever tasted in my life. <laughs> At eight in the morning, this is definitely a unique experience. Mm. I would personally give a pass on the Wagyu beef with uni because it is expensive and if you're going to Osaka, you'll find it a lot cheaper in the market there. We also enjoyed some Japanese oh. mini pancakes which were a nice sweet treat to end with. There's honestly so much food but I, I actually feel a little bit sick because everything is just so rich. Someone's in a rush. Um, this will help the buy. Actually it was 4.30 a.m. wake up. In fact, I don't know what most of this stuff is. A dried calamari. Like dried calamari. Tuna fish soft jerky. Tuna jerky. I've never been to a place where I, I don't know what so much is. I feel so lost and in the dark. Let me honest with you. I need to get out of here. The smell of fish is starting to get to me. With that being said, we moved on from the fish market and spent some time exploring Ginza before our booking at Team Lab Planets. This is officially the narrowest building I've ever seen in my life. I mean, I don't even know, like, could you even get a bed in there? I don't know. One thing that really shocked me is that all convenience stores sell underwear, work shirts and trousers because the Japanese work culture sees a lot of people spending the night in the city and therefore needing fresh clothes. This kind of blew my mind, but it's also extremely useful. Like, what do I do with this? Okay, well we just got some weird jelly substance food with flowers. Oh, it's for cherry blossom season. Look, there's little cherry, cherry blossoms. <laughs> Eat it, bite it. 
flip it. Okay, slurp it, slurp it. Drink it. I feel sick. Tastes like non alcoholic chibuku. Why would you drink that? Like, what? I can't think of a situation where I would need to drink that. It was finally time for our slot at Team Lab Planet, and while a lot of people said that this was overrated, I'm actually inclined to disagree. I had such a great time, the water room was so fun and it gave me the giggles. The giant falls was also so surreal and beautiful, and same can be said for the floral installations. You can see me here crawling to try and get the best spot in the room as you weren't allowed to touch the flowers. But of course my favourite was definitely the crystal lights room, which really took our breaths away. After heading to our hotel for a quick rest and change, we had our 5.30 reservation for Michelin Star on okay, think, So apparently this place is like impossible to find, um, but I think we found it first time. So here we go. What is your vision name? Uh, Oriana Fende. Oh. I promised myself that even though I don't like sushi, I would try a Michelin star omakase when I visited Japan. I don't want to share too much about this because I'll be doing a separate video about the whole experience and if it's worth it. So stay tuned. After dinner, we headed to Golden Guy. It's a really cute area in Shinjuku with lots of cute wine and sake bars. Be careful of the cover charges here as they can be on the high side. I would say most of it is quite touristy, but you can find a few hidden gems in the streets further along. I really love the natural wine bar Pitu, where we enjoyed some Japanese wines. If you're looking for something a bit more off the beaten track though, you'll love what we did next. Okay, so we're on a very particular hunt tonight, a uh, very particular adventure. Um, we've been told by local sources in a very nice wine bar that um, Shinbashi is the place to go to party with the salary men and office ladies. Is that what they call them? Office ladies? <laughs> you might be wondering what I'm talking about. Basically, um, salary men are like white collar uh, workers um, who typically work um, in professional jobs. Probably what you guys would think if you're like from London, what a city worker would be, or like a New Yorker. Um, what would you say in New York? What would it be? Wall Street. Yeah, like Wall Street type type guys. Office, yeah, yeah, office workers. So that is our mission for tonight. So we are in Shinjuku and we are about to set on the trek to Shinbashi to party with the salary man. As soon as we arrived at Shimbashi station, we found the salarymen. Some of them really looked worse for wear. Of the salarymen off for work. I immediately liked this area better than Golden Guy. It was actually just as beautiful and photogenic as Golden Guy, but had a much more authentic feel. We were the only tourists I could see, and of course, it was filled with locals or salarymen after work. In Japanese culture, after work drinks is called nomikai, and it means drinking alcohol to spark conversation between colleagues. It was so good to actually witness a part of everyday life and Japanese culture. I found a place with all the salarymen. This is like just a couple stops away from um, Ginza. Actually, I think it's even like one stop away from Ginza, and it's like no tourists here. Usually, the only English speaking people um, or just local, I guess, as you can say, office workers hanging out after work. So, this is pretty cool. It's not even foreign to get to experience all this. In Japan, most of the bars are up and down the stairs, so always make sure to check out what's happening above and below you. We found the cutest bar and even spent some time talking to salarymen and office ladies in this bar. They were so friendly. I didn't film this, but I just wanted to let you know, don't be afraid to reach out and talk to the locals. 
The bar also proved to be a great spot for viewing some salary men that had a little bit too much to drink. I guess I know why they have the capsule hotels now. How these guys got to work the next morning is beyond me, but that wasn't my concern as I was about to try a famous Japanese pastime, the karaoke bar. <laughs> As the night went on, the karaoke got worse and worse, but it got more and more fun. I just go to say how much I I just go to say. I genuinely think we made friends for life. We ended up getting back past at nearly 3 a.m., which was the sign of a great night. And there we have it. That's how I spent my first 24 hours in Tokyo. Stay tuned for so much more incredible Japan videos coming here soon. The most expensive strawberry. Oh, it's not even big. The most expensive strawberry I've ever bought. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more.